Okay, folks. Um, you notice, uh, you notice uh, something here. I, I uh, got the chassis mounted in my small chassis stand. I didn't think it'd fit, and I didn't have room to get my large one up here. But I uh, went and remeasured because it was going to be a real pain to get this stuff mounted back up on the chassis um, without the chassis stand. So I went and remeasured, and it, as you can tell, it fit within a eighth of an inch on each side. So I've got it mounted for now. I may have to take it out later on when uh, when I'm trying to do some other stuff. Uh, but for now, it's gonna gonna help a lot. Um, on the underside. I went ahead and got the rest of the resistors and capacitors in there. Um, down here, I replaced all these. Uh, there was a there was the 35 volt uh, electrolytic capacitor. Um, this little unit here. I went ahead and replaced that. Uh, it's about the size of my thumb now. It's very small. Um, this big resistor here ended up that was supposed to be 12k and ended up being 6.3 so I went ahead and re replaced that with a um, modern capacitor or resistor excuse me and then I had that one ceramic capacitor in here that I was wondering about checked out a little bit more it was a 0 0.02 mf ceramic capacitor it wasn't supposed to be a ceramic capacitor but I probably could have left it in there but it was a 0 0.02 and looking at the schematic and everything it was supposed to be a 0 0.002 so I had bought uh, some of these 0 0.0022 uh, orange drops when I was doing the uh, um, S38B so I used one of those in there other than that everything should be about put back to get or under here is put back together so we're going to start first um, by mounting the uh, new electrolytic, multi-section electrolytic that I got from Hayseed Amfest. He was nice enough to send me the mounting plate. Essentially, they go on like this. <laughs> if I can do this right. There we go. You go on like that. Now if you had the mounting holes uh, on the chassis like the B had, you wouldn't need this plate. You'd just put these in there and twist them in. So what I do here is I twist them in like this. Keep it attached to the mounting plate. And we'll go ahead and add uh, on the soldering iron here, see if I can't get a little bit of dab of solder on each one of those, make good electrical contact. And then these, this actually will mount from the underside of the chassis, or at least the old one did, through the hole. Well, no, it won't because it doesn't fit on this one, so I have to mount it from the top. Um, and I'll decide whether I I'll decide whether I'm going to use uh, uh, hardware or if I uh, if I use a stainless steel stainless steel rivets on that. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get my rivet gun on there real good, so I'll probably just use use a little bit of mounting, you know, screw and nut on that to, to mount that. So I'm going to pause it here, um, get those soldered on, and get it mounted. Then we'll flip it over and start uh, attaching wires to it. Alright, we've got the uh, new multi-section can um, mounted. I haven't wired anything up. I've decided to go ahead and get as much mounted on the top on, on the top, and then flip it over and start doing the wiring. Uh, I've got the label facing the back so you be, be able to read it when you take the back off if for some reason you need, need to. Um, so my next uh, next priority is go through and 
get these cans shined up, polished up. Uh, not sure if the original finish was more of a gray or whatever, but I can polish them up. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Polish those up. The uh, little insulating, uh, I got the other piece here. Oops. A little insulating part that goes over the top of the uh, top of the transformer is obviously, as you can see, I just broke more of it. Uh, pretty much uh, gone. So I did get some uh, fish paper. Apparently, that's the uh, what most people use to recreate those. So I recreate those and, and put it back together and put it in there, and then we're doing the same with the other two. Then we'll put the variable uh, capacitor back in, which I have pretty much cleaned up here. Um, got the fins all straightened out. Need to clean that part up there just a little bit. Yet, I got it cleaned off really nice back here. And I can remount that and resolder that. And uh, got the bell off the uh, um, transformer. We're going to take that out and media blast that and powder coat it. And uh, last but not least, this has made several uh, passes to the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I'm going to try something I haven't used. A lot of people I've noticed are, are using it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to dip this in some evapor rust and see what happens with that. I know a lot of people have been using that. I'm going to go ahead and start trying try that. Depending on on uh, how that works, I may rather than doing all the uh, manual cleaning of the chassis next chassis I have, I may if the results on that work out real well, I may go ahead and use that method so um, our uh, put on some gloves here and polish this up offline then I'll show you uh, my attempt at remaking that uh, uh, remaking that insulator and we'll put that back in um, what I use, well, I'm doing what I've been doing on these is hitting it with Brasso get most of the crud off of it and then uh, our do the final polishing with uh, mothers so uh, I'll go ahead and do that offline here and show you the results here in a minute all right <clears throat> but this uh, polished up about as well as I'm going to be able to get it polished up I've still got to clean out the inside before I assemble the coil back into it what I'm going to try to do now is tape tape this uh, shield or whatever you want to call it back up so I can use it as a pattern. As you can see it's fairly crumbly. going to have to try to get it as close as possible. Uh, not really a precision type of thing, but if it looks, I'd like to have it be fairly close. So that's probably about as good as we're going to get it. Then we have our fish tape, fish paper here somewhere. What do I do with it? There we go. I 
get this on Amazon. There we go. It's almost like it's almost like gasket material, only a little bit thinner. So I will attempt to mark this. survived. I'm going to go grab a pair of scissors. And obviously we're cut on the inside of that line there. this for my wife a while back and never returned it to her. I believe there's a punch mark there. basically punch mark right there punch mark right there that looks to me like you know actually I think it's mainly these two punch marks there let's see if I can see that mark on there now First, not going to be too. Oh, yeah, I guess I got him. So, what I do. Start that one there. Start that one there. And there is one in the middle. So essentially, what we're trying to do is get so we can hit these two. One in the middle is a little bit smaller, but I only got one size punch. There we go. Sure, but there were punch marks there. I'll go ahead and put those in.
Pretty close. Should work. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back these out a little bit and hit them with some uh, contact cleaner. find my screwdriver. Gap here. out a little bit. Get some of that rubbing compound out of there that went right through the holes. Yeah, shove a towel down there when I do the next one. Try to keep it from falling through. Oh well, you live and learn, right? So, that looks pretty good.
there we go. So all I got to do is get through the parts here and find my nut and wa uh, washer, put that in or mount it back on the uh, uh, chassis and we'll move on to the next one. Or also go ahead and obviously when I clean the la when I clean the label up on this one the or clean this one up, the label was barely visible up here and of course it came out cleaning it, it came off cleaning it up. So I'll just go ahead and on these other ones it's it's mounted it's labeled on the side. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, rewrite the uh, number of the uh, transformer on there and uh, so it's easier to identify if anybody else has to work on it later on but that looks pretty good so I'll move on and get that done and then uh, then we'll move on to the uh, variable capacitor thought I'd uh, update where we're at as you can see we got the multi-section capacitor in there I got the IF transformers in there and I've got the uh, variable capacitor, tuning capacitor remounted. Did it did figure out something that's interesting. There's a there's a screw up here on the front of it. Hopefully you can see that. That if you remove that, it allows you to tilt this up so that you can get underneath it and and uh, do your soldering on the bottom of the uh, of the capacitor. So we got that all put back in. Um, I've got the bell of the uh, power transformer off. Looking a little bit more at the manuals and everything, it seems that on the S40 and the S40A, the bell was actually uh, not painted. It was a s silver in color. I'll clean this up. We've got the bell out at the uh, other shop so we can media blast it. And then we're either going to replate it or um, just shoot it with clear. And then we'll get that back in. So, what I'm going to do next, and luckily I took some pictures of it, but what I'll do next now is I will uh, work on getting the uh, multi-section capacitor rewired in there, remove that, and then get the IF uh, cans rewired back in. I'll go ahead and mount these back in there, um, and then that way when I get the uh, uh, transformer done, uh, I'll be able to turn it on and test it. Okay, folks, um, I've got the IF uh, cans soldered back in. Um, before I took it all apart, I took some fairly detailed pictures. Look like that. I used those to help me uh, figure out where the wires went, and then I double checked it against the schematic. Um, so it made it fairly easy. I ran into two slight uh, issues. This, uh, on this uh, IF can, um, this wire was supposed to go to this 0 .02 uh, cap that then went to ground. But according to the pictures that I took, um, it went wrapped around this and then went to this cap. That didn't really make any sense. I don't know you know, all the schematics I looked at, this went directly to this cap and then to ground. It didn't tie into any of this. So, after a little bit of thought, I decided to go ahead and put another terminal here, single terminal, and do it this way. If for some reason something doesn't work, um, you know, I can always take that out and put it back the way it was. But, I mean, to. To me, it clearly shows that wire coming from here, up here, and wrapping around this terminal that this resistor went to, this 
like that was a 1k resistor uh, and then it going here but that's not the way any of the schematics show it so I went ahead and did that the other thing I ran into uh, the wire that was coming from here to here was actually a bare wire obviously the, the cans in a little bit different that bare wire won't make it same way with this wire here uh, you can see what I ended up doing. I, I just couldn't make it reach over to the to the 30 uh, megafarad uh, uh, cap. Um, so what I did is I ended up, I, I, when I was trying to I was trying to pull it out of the wiring harness and uh, <laughs> see if I could make it a little bit longer. In doing so, I the insulation fell apart on me. So. Uh, I ended up just clipping it off here, clipping out down there, and then putting, replacing it with this wire here. So, um, other than that, everything now electronically is done on it, except for putting in the power supply. Um, or do that next. Um, we've got the bell, the top bell on it. There's actually not a bottom bell on it. I know it got uh, Brad. Uh, KD0JCP uh, <clears throat> media blasted it for me last night and I believe he shot it with some clear lacquer. We're trying to get that done today and put that back in or go ahead and put a three uh, a grounded plug on it and a uh, uh, a fuse on it. Then we'll be able to fire or go ahead and mount these back in there. Then we should be able to fire it up and see if we can get it to work. Um, I have to go through and uh, I haven't tested the tubes yet. Um, I'll go through and test the tubes and then we'll fire it up and see if it works. If that works, we'll set it aside and uh, start working on the case because you, your final uh, alignment needs to be done while it's in the case. Alright, I um, have the uh, power transformer mounted in there just two bolts right now are finished mounting or tightening down the other two sides uh, when I get it out of the rack uh, I decided to go ahead and just replace the hardware ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner a couple times and you know just really for the money it wasn't worth it for me to spend a whole lot of time cleaning it up so I went out and got new new hardware you see they're nice and shiny um, this is what the uh, transformer bell looks like after we uh, bead blasted it and then shot it with some clear lacquer uh, there's some pitting in it I don't know if you can see that in the camera but uh, you know short of really polishing it up and trying to figure out a way to uh, fill in the pitting this was the best we could do I think it looks a lot better than it did obviously um, so my next step so I've got to go through and reattach the wires down in here here's a cap that goes across these terminals I'll look at the schematic uh, but I think that is where the power comes in to the transformer so I'm going to replace that with uh, our double check but I'll our, our replace that with a safety cap um, I've got some pictures that I took before I took this out that I'm hoping will help uh, get the wires back in the proper place like I said in, a little bit ago uh, here's I left the, the cord hooked up uh, I'll replace that with a three wire cord and go ahead and ground it glue a, a fuse block probably right about in here and uh, to provide an extra level of protection so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut the camera off do my little bit of research on this and then I'll come back and um, we'll go ahead and uh, replace that cap and get the rest of these wire, get the rest of the wiring done, and move on from there. I've um, owned, or I've uh, taken the 
scuff pad on the inside of the chassis here so I can glue down the, uh, uh, the fuse block. So I'm going to take a little bit of the Loctite Super Glue Ultra Gel. Put some drops of it on there. down here or let that sit for 10-15 minutes and it won't come off of there. I went ahead and uh, ohmed out the transformer. Everything seems to be okay. Uh, I figured out that that capacitor in there isn't across the line. It's from the line to ground. So I replaced that here with the appropriate uh, safety cap. Then uh, put a rubber grommet in on the hole. And get my uh, get my uh, three wire cord in here and start wiring back up from that. So we'll go ahead and let that dry, cure, and then uh, we'll start on putting the cord in next. All right, next step we're going to hook up the cord. I've got a cord here. It's just a typical computer cord. Um, I've thrown hundreds of these away in our computer business. This one's rated at 10 amps, 125 volts. Just cut the end off, throw it away, strip this down, and uh, I put a grommet in the hole that, that used to uh, that the old cord used to go through. So regular rubber grommet. Um, or feed the cord through through that grommet, and I use this bolt down here or get this nut and bolt off the transformer to hold it in place. Tie the hot end here, and then run from the hot end over to here. Uh, and then we'll run the, the neutral or the uh, common end to there. Um, since this is actually a, uh, this line filter resistor actually is from the line to ground, where we use it, we would use a, that would require a Y2 uh, safety capacitor. It's a .01. I don't have any straight Y2s, but I have an X1 slash Y2. So we're replace that with this safety capacitor here. Then we'll rewire, rehook these up, put a one amp fuse on it. Um, then I'll try to uh, do a few resistance checks on it and uh, we'll test the tubes, put them back in. And then we'll see if we can get any noise out of this old girl. So I'll go ahead and get, get that put in there, get everything soldered up and uh, we will go from there. Alrighty then. Uh, I got the uh, cord in. Uh, the new uh, uh, safety cap in there. Fuse wired in. Everything looks, uh, looks like she's ready to go. So we will go ahead and uh, pull the tube tester out, test the tubes and make sure we're okay there. And then we'll probably do some resistance checks and try firing it up here. St. Louis. A CBS News battleground tractor right. pull just out. We're going to jump Find forward here. Trump in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and, and then Wisconsin. go back and cover some stuff. Matthew is now a post it's finally cyclone. alive. While it was a hurricane, um, the storm triggered major flooding really in eastern North really Carolina. I really bad about this. I, I went and looked the last time I posted a video was in June, so it's seven. been sitting on a bench here three months while other things... In Lumberton, and there are hopefully evacuations that had occurred. got my attention, and then I ran into a couple problems on it, which are go through, um, but it's finally working. 
Um, this is KHS, our local station here. All I've got is a little two-foot wire uh, connected to it, but uh, it's pulling in and actually actually sounds pretty good. Um, all I did so far was just a quick and dirty uh, IF uh, alignment on it. I haven't done any other alignment on it yet. Uh, just to make sure that it was working. Um, uh, and then you're supposed to do the actual full alignment on it when it's in the case. So uh, I want to let you hear it. Uh, I'm sure Arthur will be <laughs> relieved when he, hear, when he sees this video. Uh, I'm going to shut it off here, flip it over and show you everything that uh, we ended up doing. Obviously you can you can see we got everything mounted up on top. We're back to using a, one of the original 80 uh, um, tubes, uh, rectifier tubes. Got this all mounted back on. So um, what we're end up doing yet is I got to finish cleaning uh, cleaning this stuff up, mounting this back on, and. Uh, Getting the dials replaced on it and getting it restrung, and then we're then we'll go ahead and start on the uh, uh, case. So I'm going to pause the video here, shut it off, flip it over, and show you what we had to do and what the problems we ran into under, underneath it. Okay, before I flip it over, I want to show you this. This is the sensitivity control um, that's on the front of it. And it's got a switch in the back. Anyway, when I was researching another problem, hopefully you can see this. Uh, the sensitivity control was either on or off. So I finally, when I was messing with it, I noticed some black carbon fell out of it. So finally I went ahead and took it off. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but there's carbon here. And there's carbon over on this side and there's a huge swath here where the carbons come off so I'm gonna have to find a replacement for that switch right now I've got a I had a uh, Radio Shack 10k audio taper potentiometer I've got jury rigged in there <clears throat> um, uh, who knows maybe never use the sensitivity control on it but we want to make it right so I've got to hunt one of those down yet and get that replaced. Okay, what we're do, we're very carefully flip it over so I can show you the underside. Now I put, I get these off. I went ahead and put a uh, Three wire grounded cord on it comes in here through a grommet um, and then I go to a fuse and you can see I've got the fuse jumpered right now I was having trouble with uh, with some issues and it kept blowing the slow blow fuse so now that I got in there I got to figure out whether I was putting a one amp slow blow fuse and I think that's a little bit small I have to see if I find a one and a half or two and put it in there anyway um, you can see that uh, uh, I reused these caps um, in hindsight I would have just replaced all these because uh, some of the leads are really short on it and that caused me some problems but that's neither here nor there uh, I've, one of the first problems I had after I got done is my voltage on uh, B plus was way 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 high and if you notice most of these wires here originally were color coded and, and marked in my defense not a very good defense uh, I ended up switching a couple of these wires here took me a while to figure that out once I got that figured out uh, then what ended up happening is this cathode resistor here kept well it didn't pop 
but it certainly got hot as you can see there and the voltage was way too high on the cathode here and I boy I triple checked my wiring I even had my son Brad KD0JCP come out and he went one evening he went through it with me and everything uh, looked right very confusing um, and uh, finally I punted I shouldn't have waited so long I punted and I got on the Halicraft one of the Halicrafters Yahoo mailing list and and told people what we were doing and uh, a fellow by the name of Art on there uh, pretty much diagnosed it he said that this IF transformer must be shorted now that well that makes sense you know I I had checked it you know across the across the coils and everything looked all right but I didn't check it from coil to coil so I went and took it apart or unsoldered it and started ohming it out and realized and when I say I checked it checked it across the coils I checked it across the coils before I put it in well as you can tell those are very faded and turns out that I had the green and blue wires on that IF transformer reversed I thought this was the green one and to me it still looks green now and I thought this was the blue one well I, w I was wrong change those back around my voltage problems went away uh, on the cathode resistor and it's it's running nice and cool now so as you can see uh, or as I showed you earlier um, after I did after I uh, um, adjusted the IF uh, IF transformers I can actually pull in stations now so again my apologies to Art and everybody else for taking this long I can't believe it's sat here for three months and believe me I worked on it I worked on it on and off those three months um, I had a couple other projects I was working on and obviously unfortunately I still have to make money to live and we had a few things come up in that that really tied me down but those have been straightened out so next up like I said I'll go ahead and get the dials back on and get it restrung and we'll start on the on the uh, on the case and uh, um, you don't you don't know how, how relieved I am that we finally uh, finally got this far um, if anybody knows a source or whatever for one of those uh, pots with the switch on the back of it, it's a 10k pot with a switch on the back of it um, I'd uh, really appreciate it so this is uh, until next time this is WD0 DXD signing off that's all folks WD0 DXD signing off